we're all so busy living our lives. And then suddenly something cuts through that, something often very unexpected. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. A 31-year-old female with two stab wounds to the back. He was found to be in traumatic cardiac arrest. I can't feel any pulses. We're at George's Hospital in Tutu. 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London, one of Britain's busiest a &E departments, under more pressure than ever. So do you want to watch, darling, or do you want to look away? This is the worst day ever. You never know what's coming in, and you just have to be ready for anything. Gas canisters exploded, 15% burns to hands, face. In a world of uncertainty, we see a life-changing event. I'm a and &E, I need to get out of here, please. When patients come in, something takes over. I'll be fine. I'm going to be very fine. A place where life... <laughs> Give me an A. Give me an A. Love. Okay, good lad. Well done. And loss... <laughs> ...unfold every single day. Did you enjoy the Queen's birthday yesterday? I watched yeah, the football. <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Don't worry. We get to see people who love one another in loads of different ways. Yes. And I think you can give someone the best care in the world, but really what they want is to hold the hand of the person that they love and for them to tell them that they're going to be OK. You're my hero. Emergency ambulance, what's the emergency? A uh, lady in the car park, she's been stabbed in the back. Okay. It's the second person has been stabbed as well. Okay, so it's, it's two patients? It's two people now. When did this happen? Uh, just now. George's ED. Okie dokie. So, uh, do you know at this stage are any of their injuries life threatening? I'll stand by then and, and wait to hear from you. Thank you now. Bye bye. When you get a phone call, which isn't the official major incident call, it's just a pre-warning, that's almost worse because you think about what you're going to need based on very little information. In the space of 10 minutes, four women are stabbed in an unprovoked attack in a supermarket car park. Is the attacker still nearby? The attacker's run off. Is there any serious bleeding? Uh, yes. OK, listen to me. Police and ambulance on its way. George is ED. Adults trauma, okay, yep. What's happening? Yeah. Oh. It's Sierra Papa Juliet. Thank you, bye. So this is a 71-year-old lady, JD, that's been yeah. stabbed. 71? Yeah. Okay. The stabbings can be quite common. You expect them on a sort of a Friday or a Saturday night, but certainly you don't expect it from middle-aged ladies in the Sainsbury's car park. I had an unknown phone call, and they said it's the police. I think he pretty much just said, your mum's been stabbed. Just those words are quite, they hold so much in them. And, you know, it could be that She's been stabbed and she's been killed. Unknown adult female trauma booked into recess two, please. The fact that I was speaking to a policeman, I thought, well, it's clear she can't speak. I just started crying, actually, because I didn't know how bad. George's ED, adult or paediatric, adult trauma. Mm-hmm. Will there be any more coming that you know of? Is this the Kingston incident? What happened to these women in a supermarket car park to lead to such horrific injuries? Like, 
what was going on out there. OK, brilliant. Thank All you so much. Thanks. The first stabbing victim is being rushed to St George's. Second adult female trauma booked in Teresa 7. It was a really gorgeous sunny day. It was just stunning. Friday is normally golf day for Mum, but this particular Friday we had organised for my eldest to stay over at hers as a bit of a treat. There's two trauma calls coming in, both stabbings, 67 and 71. 67 and 71? Yeah. There's a Waitrose has opened up just round the corner, so she tends to go there now, but because she used to buy this macaroni cheese from Sainsbury's and she knows that my son likes that one, she went back there that day. I had a phone call from the police and he said my mum had been involved in an attack. You don't expect things like that to happen at 11 o'clock in the morning. So you've got some stuff ready for access. Great. She's going into Risa 6. Uh, OK, we'll get you across and then we'll get handover. Well done, well done, Jean. Thank you. Hello, Jean, my name's Jenny. Who's giving us handover? Jean, 67-year-old female, so they should step right inside rear of the jet with three-inch uh, blade. And do we know the circumstances around the stabbing? Uh, unprovoked, so. Do you have any chest pain? Only when I breathe. If that knife's gone through your chest or your abdomen and it's hit a vital organ or a major blood vessel, then you can be in a lot of trouble very quickly. Oh. Looks like it's gone in at that angle. OK, I mean, we're going to get CT, chest, abdo, pelvis anyway. Jean needs an urgent CT scan to assess whether the stabbing has caused serious internal injuries. It was the longest journey ever. It's just that awareness that you know life can just change in an instant. <coughs> 10 minutes ago, 67-year-old Jean arrived at St George's. This is Jean, who's... Um, from recess. She was one of four victims stabbed by a stranger in a supermarket car park in broad daylight. The main concern from a stabbing would be somebody bleeding to death internally. You ready, guys? On three, one, two, three. Lovely. OK? So what's going to happen is we're going to do a CT scan of your body for you, OK? Doctors are concerned that the knife may have punctured her vital organs. Stay like that. Oh. Perfect, sorry. This is the painful side. Oh. I grew up in a pub in Fulham called the Golden Lion, and we lived in the flat above the pub. We'll be done nice and quick, OK? It wasn't like they went out to work because we lived in the work environment, so she was always there, as was Dad. They were just downstairs in the pub. There were plenty of incidents. I think she probably protected us from the worst things that happened. Please, normally. I remember a couple of guys came in with a machete, yelling and shouting, and uh, she gave them a jolly good talking to. She's always been feisty, so she did judo when she was younger, and she can throw someone on the floor if she needs to. And she's never been fearful. 
way back. Feels like an arterial blush there. It's about sort of fluid, and it's only like a little bit now, but things to be aware of. Uh, ready? One, two, three. And I actually heard what happened from the radio in the car on the way to St George's, and that was really scary. It's the fear of how that injury is going to threaten her life. OK. No problem. It was worrying you. Don't be worried about anything. The second stabbing victim has arrived in Resus. Uh, he came to seven. It's unbelievable what was happening, but the horrific nature of it wasn't our concern at the time. Our concern was it was helping these women. She was waiting to catch the bus to the gym when she was attacked outside the supermarket car park by the same man. Okay, let's have a hand over. This is Ryan, age 71. She's uh, attacked the two stab wounds to the abdomen. They're about centimetres wide. The blade was four inches long, apparently. The uh, one in my mind is fine. It's quite swollen. The other one's a bit further on the muscle, left side of it. You know my daughter? We were... As soon as we kind of got to a happy stage, okay. we'll get her in. What's your daughter's name? Soraya. Soraya. On the way to the hospital, I just remember thinking, well, who would have done that? How could you possibly want to stab my mum? I'm just going to wheel you around there, okay, okay, my love? Doctors must now find out whether the stab wounds have penetrated Rani's internal organs. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Rani. Rani? That's what they call my mum. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's queen, isn't it? It does, indeed. We're going to do a CT scan of your whole body, all right? Right. I grew up with just my mum, so um, my dad wasn't around. OK, on three. One, two, three. She didn't let me take a single day off school, even when it was snowing and no one else turned up. We were there. OK, can you bring your arms up above your head for me? Well, this is a bit difficult. I think getting an education was pretty high on her list of priorities. Breathe in and hold your breath. Because I'm an only child, we're very, very close. When my dad passed away, it's one of the many things that pulled us closer. OK, so on three again. Everyone ready? One, two, three. I felt really awful that she was on her own without anyone there. Let's get you back up again, OK? <laughs> Having just had something awful happen and then to be completely surrounded by strangers was quite a horrible thought. OK, I'm sent waiting on two more blood test results. Oh, that's good. Well, all I want is just a little bit of apple crumble and, and uh, ice cream, that's all, when I get in. What brings you to A&E today? Yesterday I was playing on my son's Segway and I come flying off it. Things you tell your son not to do, you yeah. were doing? Yes. <laughs> Big old... Uh... Do you ever think about, like, why people became doctors? I think about it quite a lot. So I do. So, Thomas, tell me exactly what's been happening. Early on the week, I ate some fresh rhubarb. OK. Traditionally, I had to, had to keep away from fresh rhubarb. But for some reason, I don't know why I did it, but I went ahead and did it. And you notice your feet are swelling, yeah? I'm in a bit of a quandary because tomorrow morning, I'm escorting my wife to Buckingham Palace 
So for her to get an MBE. And I want to walk straight. So you need to be in top form so you can have a good dance with the Queen. This is BBC Five Live. So Sophie, what do we know about what happened? Well, it was a normal Friday morning. People had just dropped off their children at the school, just next to the Sainsbury supermarket here. That a man entered the car park, he began stabbing a woman. He then went on to stab another, and then another, and another after that. George's ED. Adult or paediatric? third stabbing victim is being rushed to St George's. Sierra 301. The victim's son has been informed and is on his way to A&E. I was at work and I was on the sales floor. I took a phone call from my brother's girlfriend. Can you please tell me, are you sending us any more? Because if you are, I'm going to have to do something about it. She said, someone's gone on a, a mad rampage near the house and uh, with a knife, your mum's been stabbed. Thanks so much now, bye bye. And obviously, that's a bit of a bombshell. Can I have an unknown adult female trauma booked into recess five? As soon as I put the phone down, I just slammed the laptop shut, got in an Uber and, and made my way to the hospital. Five. Thinking about the intent of the person that did this is quite horrific. It's like Armageddon coming to the department. Okay, we'll go on three. One, two, three. Um, so this is Janet. Janet is 62. She sustained uh, three stab wounds. First one to her right side, flank at the back. And second one to the right side waist, uh, third one to the right forearm, approximately one centimetre each. She's a little bit anxious, obviously. OK, good. Primary survey, please. Hi, Janet. My name's Will. Lots of people around you, lots of things going on, OK? Nice deep breath in and out for me. Not too much, because it hurts. OK, as deep as best you can. OK, I'm just going to press lightly around your tummy. Good pulses, but he's, she's cool peripherally. If somebody says that they're cold, then that suggests that they're losing a significant amount of blood. I'm trying not to cause you any more injuries. I'm sorry about what's happened to you. Are you able to sit up for us a little bit? We'll have a look at these wounds. You want to have a look as well? Well done. Oh, that's quite thick. Oh, oh, oh. Quite a lot of bleeding there. A hematoma is essentially a large collection of blood, so that was a, a signal that she potentially was accumulating blood outside of her normal blood supply. OK, so in summary, three stab wounds. The top one looks fairly significant, actually. We're going to do CT chest, abdo, pelvis. We need to try and get some monitoring on to the SATs, heart rate, blood pressure, please. Right, ready? feeling? Um, painful, mm. I'm a bit shocked. Yeah. The first stabbing victim, Jean, is now in resus. Initial CT scans reveal an internal arterial bleed caused by the stab wound. Doctors are keeping her stable until they receive the full report. I didn't even realise he'd stabbed me until I felt all the blood and I heard this other woman screaming. So I got into the car and I drove around to see if I could be of assistance to her. I heard her shouting, don't stab me. Mm. So she must have seen the light. Awful. And then when I got out of the car, I was dripping blood. Mm. Gosh. Care takes all sorts of forms and it ranges from simple hand-holding to 
literally having your hand on someone's heart saving their life. Are you expecting any visitors? My daughter. What's your daughter's name? Claire. Claire. I'll keep an eye out for Claire then. As soon as she's here, I'll bring her in. That's what's important, is to ensure that patients are treated as more than just their injuries. Had you at least done your shopping, or were you just about to start? No, I've done it. That's why I'm carrying two heavy bags, so I couldn't get out of the way. My grandson's coming to sleep over tonight. I only went round to Sainsbury's to get his favourite tea, macaroni cheese. <laughs> he always thinks oh. I cook it. He'll be disappointed. Before they were stabbed, these women had so much going on in their lives. You know, they were, you know, out shopping, they were mothers, their, their aunties, their care providers themselves. It is unfair. Just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, particularly horrific. Stay away from fr fresh rhubarb from now on. What was it, a rhubarb custard or rhubarb? No, a rhubarb crumble. As I was ordering it, I knew I was doing the wrong thing. <laughs> We're going to start you on some tablets for gout. Fair enough. Because it's, it's, it might be something that's creeping back in. Thank you very okay. much. Give me a sec. Hold on, we haven't got your tablets yet. All oh, right. We're just going to get them. OK. You in a rush? Yes. Give me just a second then, all right. Earlier today, four women were stabbed by the same man in a supermarket car park in Surrey. Shout if it's sore. You're going to have to be flat on the scanner, so... A third victim, Janet, has three serious stab wounds and is having urgent CT scans. You're going to have to stay in this position for the scan, Janet. It's really important we just get this done. Janet's ex-husband has been informed and is making his way to the hospital. I was working in a pub in 1977 and she came along. I went to pick up some glasses. I made an excuse to go to the table, you know. Stay like that for us. I remember I said to a guy was working alongside me. I said to him, Johnny, you see that blonde girl there? I'm gonna marry her. I said, you're mad, she just walked in. I said, I know, but I'm gonna marry her. After I finished work, I phoned her and uh, it started from there, you know. We were together for a few weeks and one morning she said, I don't want to live like that. In showing commitment, you know. It's OK. We can get married. Ah, keep nice and still. Initially, she was, I don't want children. I said, OK. We had two years, and I didn't mention it. And one night, she said, I want to have a child. I said, no problem. I'm ready. Breathe normally. We had three boys. She was a brilliant mother. She adored them. She always done the right thing for them. Ready? One, two, two three. Oh! You're OK. You're, okay. You're on your bed now. Doctors will now wait for the results of Janet's CT scans. But we need to make sure she's sitting up, keep an eye on her blood pressure, keep the oxygen on at the moment, any deterioration, let me know. Yeah. OK? Good.
Claire, the daughter of the first stabbing victim, Jean, has arrived in A&E. Hello. Claire. Ah, come on in, Claire. Here we go. I'll come back in and update you now, OK? Hello. Mum. Sorry. I can't hear it, do you? No, oh, it's all right. I've been there. I know, it's on the news. Hello. Mm -hmm. Where were you stuck? In the back. In the back. Wow. Oh. Concert of blood vessels, so it's a bit of internal beating. Yeah. In 1999, it was Guy Fawkes Night. I remember sitting on the phone, talking to my friend in New Zealand, and somebody coming in and saying that my mum was on the other phone line, and something had happened to my dad. I was halfway here and then my phone's got the little red That's marker weird. on it saying you've got a message and then about five minutes later, your message, which broke my heart, you know. And then having to get across London from King's Cross to Kingston. I think I remember that whole journey, just all the thoughts going through your head. And then having that conversation with the doctor that night, with uh, my mum and I, and being told that's it. How are we doing in here? Happy enough? My girls keep me amused. Yes, good. Well, that counts for quite a lot, to be honest. After Dad passed away, life changed dramatically. Why, why do you think he did it, just completely? I don't know. I just heard him coming, pounding up behind me. But just completely oh. out of the blue then, no reason at all. Yes. For a long time, you know, she might just make herself a sandwich for dinner because it sort of wasn't worth her making dinner if it wasn't for two people. I was going to play golf. I guess you've had to postpone that, have you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Fear, is That's it? the worst of it as well, getting in the way of a good game of golf. Yeah. It's going to be a nice day for it as well. Lovely day. Yeah. But now, I think after going through years of grieving, I think she has a real renewed figure for life. I don't think we've got any plans to sort of rush you off to uh, theatre at the moment, but good, good. we do need to make sure that you're safe. We just have to keep a close eye on you, because I think they kind of nick the bottom of your lung and your liver at the same time, so, so we just have to make sure that they're not actively bleeding. We all know life isn't fair, but why did it have to be her? All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no problem. We're awaiting cardiothoracics. Jean will be taken to a ward to monitor whether or not she'll need emergency surgery to stop her internal bleeding. Hello, Amy, can I help? A man in Sainsbury's to stab like four women. Yeah. I'm just going to do a trace of your heart. Yeah. You sure. sure. Doctors now have the preliminary results of Rani's CT scan. So we've had the initial part of the scan done. Yeah. So that just shows that there's a little bit of blood around your kidney. Sounds scary, I know. Okay. Yeah, um, it does. But obviously, we're going to keep an eye on you, keep an eye on your signs, your numbers, etc. Um, and we'll just kind of see how we go from there, OK? Thank you. That's great. No problem. Thank you. Rani's daughter, Soraya, and her partner have been brought into recess. I'm fine, really. I was going to the gym and I was waiting at the bus stop. 
and I heard a scream, and I got my phone out, and I was going to do 999. Yeah. And then he saw me do that, he lunged towards me and stabbed me. It's not the first time for me that she was in hospital, um, or that I had to think about that, because she'd had breast cancer a few years ago when I was 18. How come he left you? Why did, what? Because what? I ran, I ran. Oh, ran. I ran, left my rucksack and ran, and all these cars were coming out, and I opened this woman's door and I said, help me, help me, I've been stabbed. She had not told me until after my A-levels were finished, so she was quite close to having the surgery and there was not much time to worry too much. I think she sort of protected me a bit from that. Wrong place at the wrong time, huh? Mm. As they say. The reality is that things can happen and do happen and that I maybe won't have forever. But there's a huge difference between someone being ill and someone being attacked. Hi. Yeah, um, my mum got stabbed in Hampton today. Yeah. Yeah. The sense of injustice when life's hard enough and people fight illnesses and, and age-related um, disease and that you don't need then people to try and hurt you. Right. Just about ready to start doing the stitches. OK, my love, this is just going to be a bit of a sharp scratch coming up, OK? You OK? Yeah. I'm just a wuss. I've got a very <laughs> low threshold of pain. I would most definitely not say that's the case based on everything that's happened today. It's important to make sure everyone knows I'm there for my mum and she knows that I love her. Okay, we got you a bed and heat ward, so I'm gonna bring you up. Okay. okay. Rani will be taken to a ward where doctors will closely monitor her kidney for any further internal bleeding. Today, then. Well, I was just going to get the bus. I parked my car at Sainsbury's car park. Yeah. And as I went to leave the car, I walked yeah. away, I heard someone scream, there's a man with a knife. And he was tall and he looked at me and he lunged towards me and I said, no, please don't. I knew what he was going to do. In the A&E department, we treat their immediate healthcare needs. And initially, yeah, we can hold your hand and say it's gonna be okay. But then the nature of trauma is that weeks and months and possibly years after the event, it still affects you. He was really maniacal. A good few years back, I was coming back from a friend's party. I was on the M25 and I fell asleep driving. A car was broken down on the hard shoulder, then I hit it. If I could run fast, I'd have got away. It was a major thing. I was in hospital for over three months. It affected her a lot as well. She had the three boys to, to look after, to cope with. Does anyone know that you're here, my dear? After I came out, I was still in bad shape. I didn't recover quickly, and that affected me and her. You are in the house, face to face, can't do anything. Then it starts the agitation, you know? Is my son out there? Yeah. I was six years old when my mum and dad got divorced and my dad moved out. I don't think that it negatively affected me too much. I, 
think, if anything, you probably get away with a little bit more because your dad's not around. I suppose I probably rubbed her up the wrong way a few times, but my mum's probably the fastest forgiving person I've ever known, regardless of the severity of the argument, the disagreement, the, the problem, or whatever you've done, she doesn't hold grudges. Janet, we've got some visitors for you. Hello, mate. Listen, you all right, yeah? What a palaver. You okay? Yeah. Just stay calm, yeah? Don't worry about who, what, when, how, just worry about relaxing for now. As a man, you, you often, you know, you're very protective of your mother and you often take on this, you know, very proud male kind of bravado of, you know, I'd always look after my mum and of course you would. And you always say things, you know, if anyone ever did, the, you know, upset my mum, you'd look after them. I, just, I don't know what to say to you, honest. You think you're going to be angry in this situation, but I'm just shocked to my mum. I just can't believe it. Where it's very real and it's one of your loved ones in danger, um, the... The, order, the hierarchy of what's important changes and it just becomes, is my mum OK? Take some nice deep breaths, my love. My name's Jenny. I don't want to feel any worse, please. I just can't stay feel calm, any stay worse. Calm. Stay here, Alex. Doctors now have the initial results of Janet's CT scans and have consulted specialists about the bleeding in her chest caused by the stab wounds. So I've spoken to the cardiothoracic surgeons and they want me to put a chest strain in, so we're going to do that at the moment. Mm -hmm. So that will involve a lot of local anaesthetic in here. Yeah. So basically just going just under your armpit, so it goes yeah. all nice and numb for you. And then I'll make a little incision and then put the drain in for you. OK. So, just stay calm, yeah? Right, do you want to just pop your hand up behind your head again for us, Janet? I'll be all right, won't I? I'll be all right from this. Yeah. I feel a bit weird, like I'm going to faint. I keep feeling like I'm going to faint. Take a deep breath, Janet. Just take a deep breath in. Janet? 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 She's got no uh, peripheral pulse. If you lose 20% of your blood supply, it could lead to catastrophic consequences. I'm just going to dump her blood pressure. She's 50. OK. I just laid her flat. We're getting code red. I want Belmont in there, and I want two units only. Oh, yeah. Now. She's lost about 600 mils into that chest strain now. Just say it's code red. Six-year-old man's been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder after four women were stabbed in a Sainsbury's car park in Hampton in southwest London. One is in a critical condition after the attack this morning. Janet was one of four women stabbed in a supermarket car park. She's been given an urgent chest strain to remove the blood in her lungs and an emergency blood transfusion to prevent her going into cardiac arrest. Janet, we've just laid you down. Oh, just, okay. You've had some bleeding from the drain that we put in. Yeah. All right. Oh. oh, there we go, Janet. Oh, oh. Where am I now? St George's? Yeah. Oh. OK. Oh. You still care about the person uh, whom you share kids with. And you, we, we were married for 19 years, you know, it's not five minutes. Oh, where did I go? Where did you go? Where did I go? 
Am I going to die? Not on our watch. You're, you're going to be OK. Right, OK. When things start sort of get a bit tough between us, I came one night, the kids went to bed, I brought a bottle of wine, we had a drink, and we agreed to, to start a divorce. What's happening? You gave us a little fright. Did I? Yeah, you don't remember it. I think we both having got that aggressive personality. You know, she is very kind and she wants peace of mind, and I do anything for peace of mind. Do I need to die then? No, not quite. Your, your blood pressure dropped a little bit, but it's probably a bit to do with the, um, bl the blood in your chest. The most important thing is, in any divorce, you don't do it for yourself. You do it for the kids. I've spoken to your sons. They're both here. Do you want to see them again now? Yeah. I think they'd, they think they'd like to see you. Yeah. Right, hi, Janet. Got some visitors. Hello, darling. There you go. Thank God, Aunt Alex, I've got you living with me, eh? You always kind of think that your mum's always going to be around, and um, yeah, I suppose your mum, your, your your parents are one sort of staple um, existence in your life that you don't ever expect to be sort of threatened anytime soon. Uh, three sons. Wow. Sorry. Must have been a very very noisy household. Yes, it was. They're worth it, though, aren't they? Very worth it. As a bloke, I'm probably a little bit emotionally constipated when it comes to sharing my emotions with my immediate loved one. But my mum knows I love her. <laughs> All right. Yeah, how's it? What's happening? You're going to be coming in for us to keep a very close eye on you, so you're probably going to be going to either our high dependency or our sort of intensive care unit. Bloody hell. Yeah. All right. As long as you promise not to give us a fright, then we'll all be fine. OK. All right? Is that a promise? Mm. Good. All right. Thank and you, your sons, I don't think they can take much more either. No. Bloody hell. Yeah. I ain't ready to go yet, guys. If you live your life in fear of what other people can do to you, then you're not really living your life. You have to live a life that's going to make you happy, and that should be the focus. Good luck, Janet. Thank you, darling. Thank you. I didn't want to be his victim because that was him winning and not me. I wanted to win by healing quickly, putting it behind me and um, getting on with life. I could have been killed. I can't sleep. I sometimes just see his face uh, as I shut my eyes. So it's still, it's still quite traumatic for me. I value my life. I value every day. And I'm just lucky. I'm here.
I was just worried, uh, you know, about her. And, uh, you know, you pray that nothing serious. Alex rang me in hospital one day and he said, hurry up and get back here, this needs doing or something. And I said, oh, don't worry. I said, the old dragon will soon be home. And he said, yes, but you're my dragon. <laughs> I think she's brave enough just to raise three boys, a large proportion of that by herself. And putting up with me is brave enough. Yeah, I'm very proud of her. I felt sorry for him. That's the soft touch I am. It's a very sad situation. Just for a loss of control for a few minutes, it's just ruined his life and four other people's, you know. I just want to be able to live a peaceful life without fear. I'm working on that. Thank you.